Welcome to Ball and Play, presented by Baseball News Club. We cover everything with a ball and stick around the world. We cover Major League Baseball, to international, Dominican, Australian, to Korean. We also cover NCAA Baseball Division I and softball, all the way on down, Little League softball, to T-ball. We cover over the line, wiffle ball, anything with a ball and stick. We will cover it here at Ball and Play. Please stop right now. I need you to subscribe. Please comment and also turn on your notifications. Thank you very much. And let's get started with this journey we call baseball. Welcome, welcome to Ball and Play, presented to you by Baseball News Club. My name is Sesma. I'll be your host today. Man, do we have an action-packed episode number 11 for you guys. This is insane. So much going on. Uh, we're going to touch lightly on college and some other themes today, but we're going to be heavily focused on all the free agent frenzy. I've been warning you guys for months. Once the CBA gets initiated and ratified, the free agency is going to be coming in a flurry, and did it not. Man, the landscape of MLB changed drastically this week. I mean, anyone that's sitting out there going, oh, I predicted these teams or these players are so full of crap. There were so many surprises. There were so many things that happened that nobody predicted out there. Um, so we're going to dive into that. But first off, I want to give a shout out to our followers, Pandora, Firefox, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, very popular. We're big in America, Alaska, Brazil. Shout out to Brazil. Uh, we got Africa. We've got all types of people over in Europe, Australia. So thank you again, guys. Our podcast is getting more and more popular each week. We really appreciate your support. Please download, but mainly tell your friends and family. Help us grow. Uh, I'm just one person. Uh, I don't have a bunch of people working for me or former Major League Baseballs. I'm just one person who loves the sport, trying to bring you everything with the ball and stick. So let's jump into it. Uh, today we're going to talk, like I said, mainly... The primary podcast is going to be focused on the free agency trades and everything that's been going on in MLB. Plus, we're going to break down the divisions today. Today's the first day, but we're going to work our way up to the opening day. Every podcast, we're going to be breaking down divisions more and more, but we're going to break down all six divisions, every podcast moving forward, and then we're going to go into our baseball talk once the regular season starts. Super exciting, but let's get it going, man, because we got to seriously... I have so much crap to go over with you guys. It's redonkulous. First thing, coaches, players, Little League softball. I'm always giving you guys words of encouragement. I'm going to continue to do that. If you're on the fence thinking I'm not going to coach this year, I don't want my kid to play, don't do it, man. Just go do it. Don't back out of not playing the sport. Don't sit on the fence. If you have those insecurities as a young player, either high school or t-ball or even college, man, or even if there's a pro player out there sitting there thinking, I don't want to play anymore, just go do it, man. Just go. Just don't even think. Go do it. Baseball is the greatest sport on earth. There's a reason why you love it. There's a reason why you got a ball and glove in your hand right now or in your house because you love the damn sport. Now, the thing is, is you're afraid to go out or you got anxiety or insecurities or whatever it is to go play. Just go do it. Because once you get to the field, you start seeing friends, you start playing a little warm-up toss, then it all goes away. All those worries go away. But like I'm saying, don't let your parents, don't let your friends, don't let anybody discourage you. Because baseball, just like life, you're going to have challenges, you're going to have moments where you're going to need help, or we're going to be able to do things on your own. Whatever the case is, you're still in control, you're still making the decisions, it's your life. Go do it, man. Go out there and play the sport. Encourage others to play the sport if you're like me and you're older and you don't play like you used to um encourage other people i mean you can and you know what if you're like hey man i don't have any friends or family i just moved to a new area you can always give money to little leagues and softball you can always go out and volunteer coach you can always do something so i'm just again concerning or <laughs> encouraging everyone out there but let's talk quick ncaa uh again NCAA comes out with the rankings on Tuesdays. Today's Monday night. I'm trying to get you guys this information quickly, but the one thing I want to highlight is Ben Joyce, Tennessee Volunteers. 104 miles per hour. He hit on the clock the other day. Last person to hit 104 was Jordan Hicks. Yeah, this guy closed out the game 102, 103, 104, throws a 91 mile per hour changeup, and then just pulls his, just, just plugs it with 102. 
strikes a guy out. So check out Ben Joyce of Tennessee Volunteers. Dude is throwing straight gas. In fact, we just posted a video today of that particular moment where he threw uh, over 100 miles per hour four out of five pitches because one of them was a changeup. And uh, it's at Baseball News Club at YouTube. So check that out. Um, great news, the World Baseball Classic. Yes! Yes! You guys know if you listen to the podcast, I freaking love this stuff. I have the original hat uh, from the very first series. I love the World Baseball Classic. I've talked about it a million times with you guys. It ties into everything, guys. It ties into a CBA. It ties about our international draft. It ties into everything. Baseball is growing. That's the main thing I'm trying to... If there's any point I'm trying to illustrate right now, baseball is growing. It always was. The pandemic... Yeah, it hit us in the cup. It was a shot to the cup, and I was a shortstop, so I know it's like to get a shot to the cup. Um, but it's back, Jack, 2023. I will continue to follow that and continue to bring you guys information on that. Now, one thing uh, about spring training right now, you know, obviously right now you're not going to see many big names. You're going to see a lot of the big names on social media, uh, the big players uh, like Friedman, Freeman and you know, Trout and all those guys, they're all going to be there, but they're not playing. Not all of them are playing. This goes this way every time in spring training. You always play the younger guys, uh, the guys who need to get at bats, and then the big players, once they start getting there, you know, once they start getting there through their training and there's, they go through the physicals and then the coaches want them to start batting, then they slowly get into it. It's a very delicate process, but it's nice to see. And the first person to take off and get us started in the 2022 season of spring taming was Boston Red Sox' Bobby Dalbeck. He hit the first HR of spring training, Major League Baseball. Hell to the yeah! That was beautiful. And it was a freaking monster shot, man. Uh, Bobby got a hold of that, man. <laughs> and, you know, that guy's been coming along for Boston for a long time. I feel like Boston didn't really in accept him last year. He had a good spring training last year. He's a good player. So I, I, Bobby's, dude, if you're fantasy, it's not a bad chip. I mean, he's a good egg. And he, he, this could be his breakout year. He's already got his, you know, he's got his original year underneath his belt last year. He's, he's got more time under his belt. This could be a big year for Bobby. I'm just saying it. I, that's not a bad chip. He's one of those guys that could sneak in the top 10 MVP. You never know. You never know. Um, but what's great to see is we saw Atlanta. Yeah, Matt Olson, not Freddie Freeman. I uh, saw it, Matt Olson hitting tanks in batting practice the other day. That was sweet. Man, just seeing him in a new uniform is a trip. And we talked about this before. Matt comes from a very poor hitting stadium. Oakland's a horrible freaking stadium. It's a pitcher's park. He's going to Atlanta. It's not a Colorado. It's not a Boston it's kind of in the middle, but he's going to be hitting tanks just as much. You're going to hear the word gadoosh on my videos often. Uh, what I also like to see, and this is something we've talked about a million times, is Mike Trout throwing batting practice and finally freaking hitting BP. First time this week. I've seen him since last year in the cage swinging a bat. Amazing. Most incredible thing to see because I've been reporting to you guys the bull crap with the Angels and the drama, what they've been dealing with Mike and false leading us information when he's coming back. They are originally saying he was aimed for, uh, he's aimed for spring training, but he hasn't played in a game, guys. So, but it's nice seeing Mike out there and the fact that he's hitting in the cage. Awesome. And, you know, he's a list of a lot of players that are coming back this year. Justin Fernlander uh, saw him tossing the rock the other day for uh, Houston. Great to see him back. Uh, you got a lot of players coming back this year, guys. A lot. And, um, I mean, got Mike Clevenger. What are the Padres going to get out of him? Big question mark there. So, there's a, uh, you could go Jacob DeGrom. You, the list goes on and on. So, as a fantasy player, it's there's some tough picks this year, man. This is tough. You got some quality players like Kershaw. They're guys that are always produced that are, have these question marks right now. And I know what some of you guys are thinking. Ah, it's Mike Trout. I'll take him. We don't never seen Mike Trout injured like this. And we never seen this is Mike's getting older. I got to assume the guy is still going to be hitting like he used to, but it's yet to be seen. Um, so Marcel Azuna in other news for the Atlanta Braves. If some of you are wondering why he's in spring training right now, remember his suspension is for the regular season, not for spring training. 
So right now, uh, Marcel Azuna, he is getting all the practice time. He's getting spring training. He's getting ready for the regular season. And then what will probably happen is regular season starts up, they'll probably put him in the minors. I don't know. Because remember, you can only opt option down players so many times this year. It's not like before we could just option people up and down, up and down, up and down. No, 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 not this time. Uh, this time, uh, I don't think, I don't know if they'd keep him on the after, uh, active roster for 20 days or just put him on the DL. I don't know how they're going to do that. But, uh, well, Marcel is back on the Braves. Dude, that lineup, god dang, man. That Braves lineup with Freddie Freeman, Marcel Azuna, and Acuna. I mean, just, I haven't even named even the rest of the team. God, Riley, I mean, just sick sick it's a great dude it's i mean i guess the way that i look at it is like before people were like yeah we we're talking about atlanta but now you're going damn damn you know it's like what's going on here you know atlanta's just you know some teams load up uh but some teams some teams don't now with Azuna, it is curious. He did well at Lightham. Um, he lit it up for them. But what's going to go on with him on the Atlanta Braves? Uh, there was an article that came out uh, this week uh, from sportstalkatl.com talking about will he be in the opening lineup. Um, obviously, he's not because he's got a suspension. But where does he stand? The dude's a great bat. Uh, no doubt. The dude's got a great stick. He's going to be in there. Um, I kind of find it interesting that the Braves in Atlanta kind of haven't been talking about it that much. Because there's they don't want to bring attention to Marcel and his situation. He's going to serve his time and that's it. And I guess they're moving on. So it's just interesting. Now, speaking of things that are frustrating, if you're in other news, if you're an Oakland or Cincinnati Red fan, you're right now you're going, what? the hell is going on with my team so this is a sympathy card to all you a's and reds fans first off you guys know last year i was pulling for the reds i love the reds team their makeup last year who they were how they played uh, them and them and the phillies i wanted those teams in there i felt like those teams would really shake things up but man cincinnati is having a fire cell oakland has a fire cell you're looking uh, god you could just go down the list of all the players that are flying off those teams so God dang it, man. I did not expect Cincinnati to do this. I thought they would. this would be a perfect rebuild year, add some chips, but uh, I didn't look into the numbers. Maybe there's something going on I'm not aware of, but damn, man, not good. Now, in other news, uh, in Cincinnati, speaking of Cincinnati, Annie Sabo. If you Red fans out there will recognize this last name, yeah, the daughter of Chris Sabo, she joined the Reds uh, booth. So congratulations to Annie. Uh, she's up there in the booth. Uh, I feel sorry for her because the team is going through a fire cell. But it's, you know, Chris Sable's daughter. If you're a Reds fan, you don't know Chris Sable, then I got to say you're not really a Reds fan at this point. Get your shit together. Study who Chris Sabo is. Big deal. Early 90s. World Series. Figure it out. But his daughter is now in the booth. So congratulations, Annie. Welcome to the baseball booth. Uh, very well and earned for her. She's been working her way into the organization for a while. Now, in other news, uh, I just want to remind you guys, there's the ML or the MBL Mexican League. There's KBO and, and Nippon. Those are seasons going on right now. So I know you guys are all super hyped up on MLB because I am. But don't forget about these leagues, guys. Continue to support these leagues. Because one, uh, we got Puig in the KBO. Yay, Puig. I tell you, if you guys aren't following him on IG, you're missing a totally different person. And this is a shout out to go out to Rachel Luba, his agent, who's also the agent of Trevor Bauer. She knows it. She knows what she's seen. She set that up. She's his agent. He got a million dollar contract with KBO. Nobody wanted him MLB. He played in Lightham. But if you look at his IG posts, he's a different person, guys. I really am believing more and more in Puig as a human being, not as a image or a sports athlete or or who he is in base MLB in his past. Really think the kid is trying. I got to call him a kid because I'm 50, guys. So I really think Puig is trying. And if any of you have been following my podcast and following Puig the last two years, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The dude is trying. And this is his first step back to Major League Baseball, guys. 
Now, um, Aaron Boone, in other news, announces new defensive changes for Gene Carlo. Ooh, yep. The Yankees are moving around a lot on that team right now. There's players coming and going. Uh, Luke Voigt just left for San Diego. A lot of things going on, guys. So, Aaron Boone, and we're going to circle back to Aaron Boone in a second. Ah, screw it. Let's just go into now. This is even, this is, this is it, man. This just came out today, guys. Now, we've talked about the sign-stealing scandal with Houston Astros. We've talked about that until we're pretty much blue in the face. If you've been following my podcast, you guys know that Houston is not the only one. Boston got in trouble. You know, uh, Mets coach got kicked to the curb. Uh, Boston's coach got suspended for a year, so there's been a lot of fallout. But if you've been following it, uh, Boston got in trouble and New York got in trouble years ago. And what has happened today, which is amazing, even though New York was got a slap on the wrist, and a lot of you are going, what is, what is this guy talking about? What is Sesma talking about? I never heard of New York. Dude, get in the know, guys. Houston was not the only one in trouble. There was, other, there was a lot behind the scenes, but what Rob Manfred did is it's just like the steroid era. He realized there was a... He, he can't put a Band-Aid on it. He has to crush that grape now and crush that bug. So he just focused on Houston, thinking nothing would come up. But oh my God, has it came up today. The New York... Well, wait, before I get that far, let me explain this. Let me give you a little background. So first off, we have to go back a few years. And if you guys remember 2021 in September, Francisco, Francisco Lindor accused Yankees of still in sight. There's been a lot of a lot of problems with this. But what happened was is and it's been bad. But basically the Yankees if you guys remember Boston got in trouble so for stealing signs, they had their own little method and then the Yankees it's funny cuz Boston got in trouble so they kind of rolled over on the Yankees and the Yankees got in trouble for using the Yes network and the telephone to cheat. Now, what has happened is, is Rob Manfred wrote a letter to uh, the Yankees Cashman. And when he wrote that letter, it was a, a letter written from Rob to Cashman about the cheating and what, you know, basically it was dialogue. Um, dialogue of what is not accepted and what the Yankees got busted with. So since that has happened, that letter has been a hot button item and today and there's actually oh god man um draft kings has sued because they're saying it impact their cheating impacted their their company which makes sense if you're draft kings and you're running gambling or betting you want accurate perfect information and if these guys were cheating and that's impacting your your company so they sued so this started with the lawsuit filed by DraftKings user Christopher Olsen against MLB, the Houston Astros and the Boston Red Sox, that led to the release of this letter. This is a letter from 2017 from the league to New York Yankees that allegedly includes details of the Yankee science stealing scheme. So what happened is, and if you remember, this originally came, the whole thing with Houston, the science stealing, came from Oakland. Uh, Oakland were the ones there was an Oakland newspaper that brought this up. This wasn't anything that was happened by John Boy or anything like that. This was already the ball was already rolling in the papers about the sign ceiling scandal. Only thing John Boy did is they went and researched and they found trash can banging and then it just exploded. Thank God they did do all that work because that was a ton of freaking work. But what's funny about it is today it came out on Friday or not Friday but uh Judge Jed Rakoff ruled in the Southern District of New York that the letter should be unsealed. Ho, ho, ho. The letter is going to be unsealed. So the letter from Rob Manfred to Brian Cashman detailing the Yankees cheating is now going to be released to the public. That is insane. So the sign-stealing scandal is reared its ugly head again. And again, another example of Rob Manfred failing miserably as our commissioner he did this very poorly. He handled all of this with Houston wrong, Boston wrong, New York wrong. 
And now the letter is popping back up. Dark cloud over the Yankees before they even started the season. And Boone, before this came out, put his foot in his mouth too. Aaron Boone goes, and I quote, verbatim, I think we've moved past that in regards if he would be okay adding a cheating Astro to his club. Now this came out today. What do you got to say now, Mr. Boone? You won't... <laughs> no wonder he said, I think we've moved past that. He knows, and I like Boone, don't get me wrong. But, you know, these coaches, they know the truth inside. They know what's been going on in the league. So, holy cow. You can go to Fansided, and there's a whole complete timeline of all the stuff you want to check it out. But, whoo, bold move, Cotton. We'll see how that one fil filters out. That one's bad, guys. That one's really, really, really bad. But let's move on past that. Let's talk baseball. Um, moving on to other news, Vladdy. Vladdy, last year's AL MVP. He went on IG and posted this comment. 2021 was a trailer. 2022 will be the movie. <laughs> Look at Vladdy calling. He's like Babe Ruth. He's calling a shot. He's pointing out to the outfield going, I'm crushing this one. And if you guys uh, go to our baseball news club, on YouTube, I posted Vladdy's first home run of spring training just yesterday. So check that out. Tell your friends. And, uh, yeah, that was a bomb. That was an absolute crush. I mean, pretty much even in the stadium knew it was gone. Now let's talk about the Dodgers real quick. You know their potential lineup? This is their potential lineup right now. Mookie Betts. Trey Turner. Freddie Freeman. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we'll, we got Will. Justin. Justin Turner. Cody, Chris Taylor, AJ Pollock, dude, dude, they're just loaded, man. Dodgers are loaded, but here's the thing. Pitching is their concern, not their offense. Uh, May, Carrot Top, what's he going to look like this year? What's going on with Trevor Bauer? We've talked Trevor Bauer many, many, many times. Clayton Kershaw. I mean, there's three big question marks in your pitching staff right now. Uh, Arias, you don't have to worry about. Uh, Bueller, you don't have to worry about. But, hey, man, if one of those two, dude, Arias goes down or Bueller gets injured, it's it's going to be interesting. This almost puts L.A. in the same position they were at at the end of the season last year going into the playoffs, but they're starting the beginning of the season. And, honestly, it's not that big a deal to L.A. because they got a full season. But, man, mm-mm-mm. In other news, Amara Garrett and Javi Lopez back in the same division again. Yeah, remember the history with those two? Yeah, I'll leave that one up to you to look up. Uh, also, Tyler Glasnow, Tampa Bay, 60-day injur injury list. We knew about that because he had his uh, Tommy John surgery in early August. His breakout year last year, we added the slider. That's What's interesting, he added the slider, and he gets injured. Um, his slider was phenomenal. I think he had almost like a 45% swing rate on that slider. Uh, his curveball was like 56. So... Tampa Bay, definitely looking forward to having him back. He'll come back slowly. Um, speaking of injuries, Padres, not expected to see Tatis for three months, two or three months. Now, again, this is this fake news crap. I uh, saw some news places saying, oh, they're not expected to try to void Tatis's contract because, you know, he's not supposed to be doing that stuff. I think this is a maturity thing with Tatis. We saw it last year with the argument in the dugout with him and Machado. Hey, man, he's a young, talented man. He's a very mature man, but, you know, he's going to have his moments. This was stupid. And Tatis, I think, knows that. He's apologized to the organization and the fans. Riding a freaking motorcycle is stupid ass as you can get. Um, I get it. If you're going, hey, what's wrong with minor motorcycle? There's no... It has nothing to do with that. You sign a contract. You're no longer... Think about it. None of us, 99% of us can't relate. You're a major league ball player worth hundreds of millions of dollars. You're a commodity. You're a product. You're not a person anymore. You belong to the ownership of major league baseball. So if you go out and do stupid shit and you risk that contract and you risk that organization, they could void your contract. But I doubt, you know, this incident is not a big deal for the Padres. They're not going to void his contract. But when I saw social media talking about that, you know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of the... The social media and the news out there saying that Trevor Bauer is not going to play again. 
It's just this fake news crap. It's clickbait. But to lend credence to that, uh, during a spring training game, about six or seven players, including Machado, they jumped on a golf cart and were cruising around. So, of course, it blew up on social media. This happened just days after uh, Tatis is injured. And I, I love it, man. The, the people out there that bubble wrap their cupcakes, man, they're all over it. They're like, oh, stupid move. They should void his contract. I uh, can't believe the players did that after Tatis got hurt on a motorcycle. First off, don't be babies. Don't be idiots. Every spring training, this happens to every goddamn team, guys. You look at every team, there's a bunch of players jumping on the golf cart, having fun. It was just really crappy timing uh, by the players. Tatis just got injured. It was just bad timing. But you know what? I saw so many social media places just worked up about that. And I just had to chime in a couple of those going, come on, guys. It's a golf cart. This is not Jackass the movie. I get why you're kind of, you know, your little, your underwear is in a wad. But it's, I don't know. I just have a problem with clickbait and fake narratives. And that they're not going to avoid this contract. Jesus, guys, he's the face of the Padres. Don't be an idiot. Um, we talked about the DH stock. We talked about that. And uh, let's go into some other things. Jack Leiter make in his spring training debut yeah vandy boy i'm sure his dad was in the stands enjoying that al lighter um great to see another lighter in major league baseball uh let's go into some big signings kenley jensen atlanta one year 16 million interesting move on atlanta we're going to talk more about that but remember they they that's a good move but closers aren't what they used to be that's why he's only getting one year jensen has been a fantastic player for the Dodgers for forever the guy's phenomenal um, he's lost a little bit in his speed but he's turned into a really good uh, pitcher pitcher man if that guy could just throw four innings or five that'd be great but Atlanta Atlanta's making their moves now with Tatis out uh, the Padres went and got Luke Voigt for Justin Lang a right-handed pitcher seriously on this one born on 9-11 2001 so, yeah, he was born on 9-11. Uh, I don't know what hospital he was at. He probably wasn't in a New York hospital, but still. And uh, NJ.com had a scouting report, and I'll read it verbatim for you guys. And before I do that, Luke Voigt obviously is a move for the Padres that's going to be missing the stick of Tatis, but Luke is not a shortstop. So they're probably going to be using uh, Kim and some other players to rotate uh, into the shortstop position, but... Lang's fastball sits in the mid-90s and can feature both a run and sink. He has the makings of a second power pitch and a slider that could be a plus mid-80s weapon with bite. This is a scouting report. The pitch is inconsistent. However, should be a focal point in Lang as he begins to face pro hitters. So this is what the Padres gave up. Now, what's funny is Luke Voigt said in the media, I'm relieved. Why is he relieved? Uh, he's looking forward to the 75 degree weather in San Diego. <laughs> um, cause Lang, Lang is a good trade, but this is a favor I think from the Yankees because Lang has like an unorthodox low arm slot delivery, which I guess that's raising questions for the, for the scouts. But, uh, yeah, interesting. Very interesting that, that move, but the Padres had to do something guys. I mean, seriously, you're your main player is out for three months. You're going to need someone in there. In other news, Wando Franco. Yeah, the super huge count from Tampa. Uh, got into some, I wouldn't say trouble, but some funny uh, hazing went on. He was parking in the president of baseball operation, Eric Neander's parking spot, and the GM, Peter Bendix. So Cash got involved, and they drove his, his car out on the field. During practice, and Wander Franco sitting there going, "What the hell is going on with my car?" So they were giving him a hard time, and he's saying he'll work harder to to find a parking spot. So the kid signs a big contract and then sits, and then decides to take everybody's parking spaces. I think that's freaking great. Um, let's go into some other things that went on. Chris Bryant, seven years, 182 million. Uh, Colorado. 27 per year compared to Nolan's 30. So, quick question for Rocky's organization. You had the money the whole time to re-sign Nolan. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself since Nolan's been with St. Louis. But 
you just signed a third baseman and you just lost a third baseman. Uh, the difference was 27 per year for Chris and 30 per year for Nolan. So you did have the money. Interesting. Um, Chris is going to hit a shitload of home runs. He's going to have fantastic offensive numbers. He's in Colorado. Jesus. Dude, is it's a head scratcher. But a lot of people around the league weren't expecting this. I don't think they expected Chris Bryant to go to Colorado. And I'm not knocking Colorado and Colorado fans, but let's face it. You're in an offensive stadium. You guys haven't been in the playoffs and you got a coach like Bud Black. I know Bud Black because he was the coach for the San Diego Padres, the worst coach in Padres history. And there's no argument. I know there's some fans out there to get their panties in a wad and they get all like, oh, I like Bud Black. He sucked. He sucked. He's not a good coach, man. I couldn't tell you how many Potter games a guy just wouldn't go out there and fight for his players. Dude, you got to go out there and get kicked out of the game occasionally. You got to show some heart. And I don't think he had a heart. In the, like, he's a former pitcher. And I'm sure he's a nice guy, but he just wasn't the guy I wanted in the Padres organization. Now he's in Colorado. Now look at your team. You guys had one of the worst offensive uh, seasons in, your, in the organization's career. I'm just saying, I'm... You know, you Rocky fans are going to be looking at me going, oh, dude, we don't believe you. I'm telling you, man, he's not the coach you guys need. So that was big news, but we'll talk about it in a little bit, how that works out. Freddie Freeman, six years, $162 million, And he left a beautiful statement to his fans. Uh, you can go to his uh, IG, and he left a just an incredible, and it just shows you the class of this guy, why he was so beloved. Um, I think Matt Olson will be beloved by Atlanta, but I mean, Freddie Freeman, come on, man. The guy is incredible. Uh, every, I can't think of many fans that don't like the guy. Great talent, great batter, great fielder, great all the way around, family man. So he left a beautiful letter, but, but, this sucks. He wasn't aware of it. Freddie came out in the media and said, I wasn't aware of Matt Olson, or I wasn't aware that I wasn't going to be re signed. Until I heard the Matt Olson news. What the hell, Atlanta? You guys come across as a classy organization. You always have a great minor league system. And you freaking screw over Freddie and don't even tell him? I know people go, well, that's baseball. No, that's just rude, man. I don't, I don't care. You don't take a franchise player like that or a player that's been part of your franchise for that long and the fans love and just screw him over, man. I mean, they could have contacted him and said, hey, we signed Matt, man. We love you. Sorry, I just wanted to give you this news before you heard about it in the media. I mean, think about it. If you were sitting there at home, enjoying watching TV, and you get a you look at the news and you're like, so and so's girlfriend dumps him. News at five, and you're like, what the hell? That's my girl. Wait, I'm being dumped. You find out on the news, you'd be. I don't know. There's a lot of emotions that be going on, but think about it. You're with an organization that loves you, and, you, and even Tom Glavin, I reported this, said he'd be surprised if Atlanta didn't re-sign him. Now you've pretty much, I don't know how, I don't know how the fans are taking Atlanta, but it just seems wrong. It just seems wrong. Now, Carlos Rodon, who moved on, he threw a no-no last year, had a great breakout season, but he ends up in San Francisco. So he signed a free agent. He went from $3 million last year to 21 plus. So congratulations, Carlos, for getting paid. He's in a pitcher stadium. He left Chicago, which is probably a good idea. It's not a good division, in my opinion. He, he's getting paid. But you know who's not getting paid for all their efforts and everything they do for us? Your mom. But man, the guy throws a no-no and you guys don't want to keep him on your club? Uh, Jacques Peterson, San Francisco, New York Yankees, Anthony Rizzo. And then someone I've been talking about for months, guys. You guys heard me talking about this forever. Philadelphia signed Kyle Schwarber. Schwarber! I've told you that would be a good fit. I've been talking about this because David Dombrowski, the president of baseball operations for Philadelphia, said early on and early, I mean, we're talking like five months ago, he says, I'm going to focus on outfield and pitching. I've been hard on him. I've been giving him a hard time for you Philly fans because he hasn't focused on pitching. He mixed out on Max and Clayton and some other pitchers. And he's spent money on what he said, the outfield, Kyle Schwarber. Man, that team is looking good. 
That team is looking good. And you know what? It's not even that. It's Nick. Nick Castellanos signed. So Philadelphia has Kyle Schwarber, Nick Castellanos, and, yeah, Bryce Harper. Holy cow. The ball's going to be flying out of Philadelphia this year. Atlanta got Eddie Rosario back. Carlos Correa, a head scratcher. Three years, 105. And what has been reported is Detroit and Houston offered him more years and more money. Um, Minnesota has been building. They've been a competitive team over the last couple years, but it's a little bit of a head scratcher. Now, Trevor Story, again, goes to Boston, six years, 140. But he's a career 241 away from Coors. A career 310 on base percentage away from Coors. A career 442 slugging away from Coors. This was something to where even uh, the judge from the Yankees wasn't too happy about it. But Boston is a offensive stadium like Colorado. So I'm guessing you're going to see similar numbers. Now we've talked about the All-Star game being tied. After 9, we're going to decide to buy an HR Derby, which is super awesome. And, uh, wow. Man, so much going on, guys. So much going on. So let's talk about the divisions. I'm going to start off with the American League, then we'll move on over to National League. The New York Yankees. I mean, you got DJ LeMahieu. He's not going to hit 268 this year. He'll hit better. Uh, Josh Donaldson to be able to, you know, we talked about the similar park factors between, uh, stadium park factors between the Yankees and Minnesota. Former MVP, 36 years old, had one of the lowest wars in his career, 3.2. They got Anthony Rizzo. Um, I don't know. This is a team that was sixth in the ERA last year. Not a good fielding team. What? And then with this scandal on top, I'm just curious how the New York Yankees are going to come out this year. Uh, you know, Judge had a great year last year. Giancarlo had a great year last year. This is still a really solid organization, a solid team. But, you know, you got to look at the pitching. They did have a really good pitching staff last year. They got rid of uh, Luke Voigt. It's just interesting. It's really interesting. They're going to be, I don't think their average and their hitting is going to be a problem. It wasn't last year. I think the pitching is still going to be good. And the Yankees are still going to be there. But we're going to continue to talk about them. Uh, Boston, uh, they got Rich Hill. They got Matt Stram. Um, lefty, great seasons in San Diego. And, you know, they just... They just signed Trevor Story. So they were number three ranked in average last year in 10 at home runs and 15th in ERA. So these moves last, these moves that they're doing right now, I mean, they're, they went and got left-handed Matt Stram. They're addressing the pitching. So far, Boston looks like, you know, honestly, <laughs> this division is going to be freaking competitive like last year. Absolutely. Uh, Tampa Bay, uh, Corey Kluber, yeah. Tiger Glass now will be coming from, you know, coming down the road after recovering from Tommy John. Tampa Bay is one of those, uh, you know, weird teams where it's like they don't have to make moves to be competitive. They're going to be there. You're talking first in average, uh, fourth in ERA. They're sixth-ranked minor league organization last year in 2021. They're going to be there. But the team I'm looking at right now is the Toronto Blue Jays. They went and got Kevin Gosman for a five-year deal, Matt Chapman is on there uh, they're looking good too toronto's looking really good they've moved some pieces off but i feel like toronto is really shaking things up and really really pushing the envelope to be super competitive this year uh they've lost pitchers but they've gained kevin so again as we go on with the weeks we're going to be breaking this down i'll give you my predictions before the season starts but uh baltimore uh yeah i got rough and odor uh odor uh, hopefully he can get back to his Texas days. Uh, Mancini, you're going to have Adelaide Rutschman behind the plate, hopefully, with the new collective bargain agreement. You'll see more and more young, talented players out there. But obviously Baltimore is not going to be <laughs> competing this year. I really think it's going to come down to Toronto, Tampa Bay, and New York and Boston. I mean, it's. I really feel like it's going to be set up the same as last year, man. It really is. Uh, the Central, uh, Chicago, uh Jose Abreu, you know, 261, but 217 total bases. They got Joe Kelly. They got Josh Harrison. They're still a good team, but again, this is a weak division. I don't see uh, Detroit's giving a push right now. Minnesota's giving a push. So this 
division. I think it's changing from last year. It's becoming more competitive. Uh, Detroit, who did not have a good pitching staff, they're ranked 17th in the ERA. They went and got Javier Baez, but they went and got Eduardo Rodriguez for five years, so they did address that. So it's going to be interesting. Detroit has a lot of young talent. It's going to be very interesting how they pan out. Uh, Cleveland, I don't see much going on with Cleveland in the offseason. Same thing with KC. I don't see big splash pitching signings. And when you got Cleveland's ERA is ranked 18th and KC's is 21st, so I don't really see a lot going on. Now, Minnesota, on the other hand, you had one of the worst pitching staffs in baseball, 26th ranked ERA, third most errors. Uh, Sonny Gray from Cincinnati, and they signed Carlos Correa. Head scratcher. They're rebuilding. Minnesota's got to, you know, as much as I give them a hard time, that the pitching staff is, believe it or not, those arms that they have, if they could beef up their bullpen, it's going to be a tough team. Uh, that ERA needs to come down, but you just need starters. Uh, the American League West. You got the Angels. Who knows? I don't think Noah Syndergaard is going to make a big deal, but I, I feel like the we've talked about the Angels, how many pitchers they, not just major league, but minor leagues. Uh, they, they drafted 20 pitchers with 20 picks in the 21 major league draft. Uh, seven international pitchers. They went and got Noah Syndergaard. They got Raciel Iglesias for four years. They have a 24th ranked bullpen. They got Aaron Loop for two years. So they are addressing, I guess if you're a... Uh, an Angel fan, this is probably one of the best things you've seen in years. So instead of throwing money at players that aren't going to do shit like Pujols, you know, I could keep going on and on the whole team pretty much that not done shit other than, um, you know, other than last year's MVP. Um, show, hey. But they are addressing the pitching. The West can be very different this year. I really think we're going to see, out of all the divisions in the American League, the West is going to be different this year. LA's doing a push. Oakland, I don't know. Mark Kotze is the manager. They lost Matt Olson. They lost right-handed pitcher Chris Bassett to New York uh, from Oakland. Uh, they've got all the drama going on with their stadium. They ran out of luck in Vegas. Get how I, how I did that. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, they, The riverfront or waterfront project's still been stalemate. That's more of a politics thing. You got Dave Stewart trying to do the stadium revital, re- revitalization. Oakland, I think, is... I am i don't know. I don't see Oakland being competitive this year. But then again, they're the they they're the sabermetrics team. But they were 13th in the ERA last year. One of the worst fielding teams. But uh, I don't know. Houston is always going to be there. You got Justin Verlander back for a year. He's tossing the rock. Houston's going to be there. Texas has done a lot. Uh, Marcus Simeon, seven-year deal. Corey Seager, Cole Calhoun, John Gray. So he, Texas got a new stadium. They were a horrible team last year. 29th in average, 23rd in ERA. Horrible fielding team. No punch. Well, Simeon Seager, <laughs> there's your punch right there, man. Texas, I mean, don't be surprised if you see Texas, Houston, Seattle, and L.A. This could be a very interesting division. And Seattle... When got Robbie Ray, they're making moves too. They were not a good hitting team last year, but Kalanick has got another year under his belt. Even though I saw him make a really bad air on the outfield during spring training, um, I think Seattle's making their push this year. So the my predictions early, as I'm seeing it right now with all the trades, is uh, Seattle's going to be different, guys. Seattle's going to be different. The American East, American Western Division is going to be different. Let's jump on over to the National League. National League East, I, I think all of us would be dumb not to think that Atlanta, this is not their division right now. Ian Anderson, Matt Olson. Uh, Matt went from one of the third worst park factors, fifth worst for HRs, and went to Atlanta. They ranked 16th in HRs and 6th in the park fa- factor. Then you combine the players hitting around him, they're going to be good, man. Uh, Rosario, Acuna, Ozuna. I mean, phew. Atlanta's going to be there, guys. Now, the big question mark is the New York Mets. I know the New York Mets are starting to become like the Padres. Yeah, you put a lot of money in there, a lot of talent, but it still hasn't panned out for you. They did go get Buck Showalter. That will help out. Jacob DeGrom, what's his injury? And now he's opted out. But you got Mad Max. Yeah, Jacob DeGrom opted out from next year. Uh, and then McCain, uh, McNeil, Lindor, they've got, they're not going to have bad seasons like they did, so... 
everything for hitting wise, we're talking about a team that's ranked 20th in average and 25th in HRs. It's not a hitting stadium for one, guys, but you still should have a better average. You have a ninth year array. Um, and they went and got Marte, two gold glove winners, and then Chris Bassett from Oakland. So, uh, Mad Max, they're obviously going to be competitive too, but the thing is with them is what are you going to get out of them? Is Buck Showalter going to be able to wield his magic and make that team better? It's going to be interesting. Miami, well, you got a, a, a Viziel Garcia. Eh. Sorry, Miami, you're not going to be in anymore, and you, you don't got Jeter anymore either. Jeter stepped down. Philadelphia Phillies, that's my it's not my team, but I, I love the Phillies, man. But here you go. You're no longer going to have Ethan Wilson. He's coming up. He's NCAA three years and one in uh, triple or single A. He's still on the radar for them. John, Johan Rojas, no. You got Bryce Harper in right or center. You're going to have Nick Castellanos in right. And you're going to have Schwarber in left. And the ball is going to be flying all over the goddamn stadium. It's going to be great. Uh, Washington. But uh, okay, let me digress. Um, pitching, Dave Gombrowski. I mean, Corey Nibel for one year. Yeah, I don't know if he returns to his 2017 All Star form where he did a 1.7 ERA in 76 games. Yeah, but Dave Gombrowski said he wanted outfield and pitching. He's done half of that. He's got to get pitching. And there's still some Chris Archer still out there. Still some good free agents. But again, it's. I'm really focused on what they're doing because this division, you're in the National League East. You're competing with the Mets and Atlanta. So Philadelphia, are you good enough to compete with those two teams? I don't know. I'm curious. Washington, 24th in ERA. You haven't done much offseason. Yeah, you're a footnote. Sorry, Washington fans. I love uh, Juan Soto, but I don't see that team doing shit this year. National League Central, Milwaukee still... The team that's going to push up a really strong pitching staff. They still have a good pitching staff. They suck at hitting. Uh, they're ranked at 27th last year in hitting, third in ERA. I don't think Milwaukee's going to do it this year, guys. That's my big guess. St. Louis, uh, Stephen Matt's four year deal, Mike Schlitt gone, Adam and Yadier. How, how much we're going to get out of those two guys? Yadier showed up spring training this week. It looks awesome seeing Yadier walking around in catcher gears. Uh, Drew Vernhagen from Nippenham Fighters, two-year deal. So St. Louis is putting, you know, in the thing is with St. Louis, man, they don't just put anybody in the rotation. They know this guy's going to be good. Uh, they got a good rotation with Flaherty, Adam Wainwright, Stephen Matz, Dakota Hudson, uh, Miles. Uh, sorry if I kill this, Michaelis. But now you got that other pitcher. So they're starting to, I think St. Louis is going to be one of the tough teams in this division. If not, it's going to be their division. But the team that surprised me is the Cubs. And Cubs are making moves. Marcus Stroman and Drelta Simmons. They went and got they won the the sweepstakes with Saya Suzuki. Uh, so they've got a shortstop that's locking in up the middle. They got a good pitcher. Obviously, they're not gonna be a competitive team because of the fire sale last year. I mean, they're 27th in ERA last year, guys. I, I just wish the Cubs didn't do all that and they kept Rizzo or somebody. And I feel for Cub fans. Pittsburgh. Hadn't done shit. Cincinnati. Got Jonathan India, Tyler Stevenson, Vladimir Gutierrez, Tony Santillan. Uh, they traded Sonny Gray, but number one pitching, uh, pitching prospect Chase Petty, hundred you know, throws a fastball three digits. But again, with the fire cell, this division is probably going to come down to St. Louis and Milwaukee, guys. I really, you know, Cubs are actually kind of rebuilding, but they're making big moves. I mean, as a Cub fan, even though the fire cell – I got to give it to the Cubs organization. They're make they're trying to get back to competitive, but I don't know if this is going to be it. And Cincinnati, you're just getting rid of everybody, so you're going to be battling with Pittsburgh probably. And Joey Votto, he's getting older. I, I just don't get Cincinnati. I really don't. I really love that stadium. I really love the organization. Just really think you're screwing over the fans. Uh, National League West, Padres full of drama. New coach, but Tatis is out three months. Melancon Melanson's gone. Straham is gone. Uh, Luke Voigt is on. Guess what? Your pitching wasn't that great last year. 14th in your A. You're middle of the pack. Horrible at hitting. You need, you know, you just got rid of a pitcher and you brought in hitting. But you got a new coach. Coach from Oakland. Could make a difference. But the that's not the teams that I'm worried about. Uh, it's going to be Dodgers and San Francisco again. Dodgers are still loaded. Uh, but the question mark is Mookie Betts, the professional bowler. 
You need to get more than 122 games out of him. Uh, you got Chris Taylor for a four-year deal. Cody and his 165 average isn't going to work. They re-signed Clayton for one year. But again, when you have a one-year deal, it tells you something. They're not too confident in Clayton's abilities right now. They're uh, Joe Kelly left for Chicago, but they got Freddie Freeman. This team still, <laughs> they're still loaded, man. They're still going to hit the crap out of the ball. They're the best e pitching staff in Major League Baseball last year with the ERA. Dodgers are still going to be the team to beat. San Francisco is going to be there too. Uh, Gabe Kapler, uh, manager of the year, Brandon Belt, got to accept his qualifying offer to Alex Cobb, two-year deal. Anthony uh, Discoflaney, sorry if I'm killing that. I've got a speech impediment. So if you guys haven't figured that out yet, I've had a speech impediment since I was a kid. I have problems saying names sometimes. Uh, he's got a three-year deal. Alex Wood, two-year. Carlos Rodon tosses a no-no for Chicago, and he comes over. Jacques Peterson, again, they look good. Colorado. Uh, you need to remove Bud Black, guys, but he gave him an extension. He lost Aaron Otto and Trevor Story. And then, like I told you, since 93, one of the worst offenses in their history. But, hey, you got Chris Bryant. So you did have the cash. Okay. Arizona. You went Mark Melanson. You're addressing your 29th ranked ERA. 28th ranked bullpen. Haven't done shit either. So I see this being the Dodgers division. It's kind of similar to last year, guys. It's going to be Dodgers, San Francisco, and the Padres. It really is. These are my only, these are our early reviews. Um, next week, we're going to break it down even more as we start tightening the bolts on these teams. It's going to start going into predictions more and more and heavier. And like I said, before the season started, we're going to go ahead and get that done for you. Get her done. We're going to review more and more. So I'm going to cut this out, guys. Thank you very much for listening to the ball and play presented by baseball news club all i ask is you guys subscribe and comment guys comment and all these different uh, locations for the podcast if you guys don't know where our podcasts are go to ig we're all over the place guys we're probably got 15 different locations for podcasts so there's no way you can't listen to us share it with your friends get excited for baseball get your shit together guys come on man baseball's up man i i bust my ass every week to bring you information the least you can do is watch more games and i'm in, and i hope my my boss doesn't hear this I have my, at work, I got my two work computers. I've got on my tablet a game. I got on my my uh, my cell phone a game. And I have two computers next to my work computer with two other monitors with games on. So, yeah. What are you doing? I'm watching four games at once. What are you doing? Get your shit together. Get into baseball. You don't have to be a super knowledge expert. Just get into it. So I'm leaving you guys with that challenge this week. Get into baseball. Support Little League from T-ball all the way up. Support softball. Support NCAA Division I girls and men's softball. Support blitzball, wiffle ball. Support over the line that's coming up in June. I've told you guys about over the line in San Diego. If you haven't got your tickets, get them now. And you know what? I'll put over the line on next week's topic to talk about it more. Um, baseball is great, guys. It's the greatest sport in the world. It's America's America's uh, sport. It's America's pastime. And now it's becoming worldwide. World Baseball Classic coming back 2003. Let's wrap this up. Thank you very much for listening to the podcast. Have yourself a great day. Sesma signing out.